I'd like to welcome every one of us in Jesus' name to the Impact Service today. Thank you for joining us. If you are watching online, if you are watching on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, and on any other avenue in which you are joining us for the service, we pray the power and the presence of Jesus will be made real to you anywhere you are in Jesus' name. Shall we just say a word of prayer together? Eternal Father and God, we are just so blessed to come into your presence, to the place where you are, to have a fellowship with you, and to have fellowship with one another through electronic media. We ask in the name of Jesus that you will breathe upon your word, that you will quicken your word and send your word uh, with power, with grace, and with authority. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we trust you to do what you alone can do to give understanding to the simple, to revive the hearts of your people, and to plant grace and strength by the reason of this word in the lives of everyone that we are in one form or the other. We trust you that healing and deliverance goes forth, and there will be an empowerment in the body of Christ as this word goes forth in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you for it, Father, and we are grateful that we know you will do much more. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Hallelujah. We are so blessed one more time to be together and uh, I'll be sharing for, uh, what I call effective end time believers. Effective end time believers. Effective end time believers. Uh, there is no uh, gain saying that we are in the end times. And uh, the challenge of this uh, teaching is to steer our hearts to help us to elevate our thoughts and to help us to embrace the responsibility that is laid on us as people of God living in these end times and the things that we need to do uh, to be effective, to be the type of Christian that God wants us to be. And I'll be laying foundation, uh, reading to us from different parts of the scriptures, uh, uh, in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and also in the uh, writings of Apostle Paul about the uh, realities of the end time. So for us to start, I'd like to read from First, Thess First Timothy chapter number 4. I'll read from verse 1 all the way to verse 5. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 5. The word of the Lord says, He said, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Verse number 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayers. I read again from 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Still speaking about the events of the end time. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. I read just uh, for the want of time. I read from verse 1 all the way to verse number 5. 2 Timothy I'm reading from uh, uh, chapter 3 from verse 1 to all the way to uh, verse number 5. If everybody know this. That in the last times, or in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, oddly, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5, having a form of godliness, but deny its power. And from such people, turn away. From where we read in 1 Timothy chapter number 4, from verse 1 to 5, and 2 Timothy chapter number 3, from verse 1 to 3, we see that certain things are said about the end times, the times in which you and I, we live. There are certain understanding that you and I need to have for us to be well positioned to have an effective Christian life in this time and in this season. Let me read one more scripture to us. Acts of the Apostles chapter number 2. And I will read verse 17 to us. 
Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 2, reading from verse number 17. This is the word of the Lord. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Quickly, we want to ask ourselves, what exactly do we mean when we say the end times? The end times are seasons before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the end times speaks to the various events that would happen in the world to signal this season. In the words of Jesus, they are the events that will signal the end of human age. The end signs are the, are the symbols, are the, are the signs that we see before the end of human age. So the end times are the seasons that are come before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible would have us to understand that there are, there are things that we need to know about the end times, about the seasons that you and I live in. And what are some of these things? What are some of the signs of the end time? What are some of the happenings that characterize the end time? What are some of the things that you and I need to be aware of as we think about these end times in the light of the scriptures? From 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 describes the condition of the world before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 reveals the state of the church. And in what follows, I will give seven, uh, what I call seven panoramic view of what we can expect to see in the end time. What are the symbols and the signs and the, and the things that depict the end time uh, as we uh, uh, look through the scriptures. I'm going to mention very, uh, seven very quickly. The first time is that the end times, the Bible calls them perilous times. The Bible calls the end time perilous time. In other words, difficult times shall come. In the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 24, reading from verse 6 to 8, Jesus told us very clearly that the end times are going to be difficult times. And this is what he says, Matthew 24, from verse 6 all the way to verse 8. He said, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war, see that you are not troubled. He said, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdoms against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginnings of sorrow. So the first thing to note about the end time is that the end times are perilous times. They are difficult times. The Bible says that the end times will be marked and characterized by wars, by famine, by earthquake, by pandemics and pestilences. Jesus calls them the beginning of sorrow. He calls them difficult times. They are difficult times. They are perilous times. These times are difficult. They are not just difficult economically. They are not just difficult, you know, with respect to finance. But they are difficult in many other realms. Just the beginning of this year, you hear about, you know, the, 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 the fire incident that in Australia and how uh, millions of hectares of lands were destroyed. And just, uh, just while we were recovering from that, you hear about the, the, Wuhan, uh, the, the Wuhan virus that has affected every part of our, of, of our world. And these are the signs of the end time. These are difficult times. These are perilous times. And the Bible does not hide the fact, uh, hide the fact away from us that when we come to end times or when we come to the end times, things will somehow be difficult. So number one, one of the signs of the end time is that the end times are difficult times. They are difficult times to live in. They are difficult times because they are challenging to human ex existence and human experience. Things are becoming more complex. Technology has advanced, but life has become more complex. You see, there is war everywhere. There is war within and war without. Those are the, uh, those are the signs and symbols of the end time. So the Bible says that the end times a perilous time. Second thing that you need to know about the end time is that there will be great falling away and there will be great moral and there will be lowering of moral and spiritual standards. As we think about the end times, another thing you can see 
is that there will be a lowering of moral and spiritual standards. Moral standards will be lowered. Spiritual standards will be lowered. And that is what Paul uh, would have us know. And Jesus himself spoke to that when he spoke to us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 24, reading from verse 37 to verse 39. The Bible clearly teaches that the society will degenerate in the end times, becoming as evil as in the days of Noah. Apostle Paul was speaking as a prophet, and he was saying, you know, what our society will look like. In 2 Timothy, where we read from verse 1 to verse 5, there will be pleasure at the expense of conscience. These are the days when people would rather uh, enjoy pleasure and, you know, and they will sacrifice their conscience. Why? Because moral standards are generally going down. There will be men who will be lovers of themselves. People will become lovers of themselves. There will be the enthronement of self above the community. There will, be, there, will, there, will be, there will be a drive for money. Lovers of money. Lovers of pleasure. People will become boastful, arrogant, unholy. Children will become disobedient to parents. All right? There will be rebellion and confrontation of authorities. These are the symbols of the end time. The third thing that we can expect to see uh, in the end time is that the end time also is a time of falsehood and deception. Another thing that characterizes the end time is that there will be a lot of falsehood and there will be a lot of deception. Jesus in Matthew's Gospel 24, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4, he said to his disciples, but the Bible says, and he answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you. The end times are the days of deception. Take heed. It means to be careful. It means to be watchful. It means to pay attention. It means, you know, that, that you must do everything to guard against falsehood because falsehood and deception are all marks of the end time. These are the days when people will be deceived, not only in the world, but also in the community uh, that is called church. People in the church these days, we have problems with awesome instruction. They will prefer to hear new things and appealing things. The appetite for bitter truths are reduced. We will like sugar-coated and sugar-tongued preachers. When people become, people are going to become more intolerant of the truth. The devil will fill them up with junks to their own destruction. Because they will develop itching ears. They will love to hear the things that they want to hear. They will not want to hear about holiness. They will not want to hear about righteousness. They will not want to hear the truths, the awesome truths of the scriptures. Why? Because there will be a love for deception in this end time. So Jesus said to us that as we approach the end time, we must be aware and conscious of the fact that the end times are times of great deception. And I'm praying for every one of you in the name of Jesus that the mercy of the Lord will preserve you. That the grace of God will keep you. That the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. That you will be preserved from the spirit of error and the spirit of deception that is ravaging this generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As we think about the end time, number four, the Bible says that we should expect also that the end times are times of intense persecution against the church of God. Intense persecution against Christ and his body. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24 and verse 9, Jesus said to us, He said, Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. As we go through the end time, uh, we can expect to see more and more of persecution. And these are the things that Jesus said himself. So there is no need for us to behave as if they are not modern. Then we cannot be too modern for the word of God. This is what we can expect to see as we go through the end times. Jesus was very clear about them. He didn't deceive us. He was not lying to us. He didn't placate us. He told us the old truth that as the end times approaches, we will begin to see more and more persecution of the faith. Think about the ISIS persecution. Think about millions of lives. There are millions of people that were displaced because of ISIS. Think about the Boko Haram insurgent group in Africa. Think about the Al-Shabaab uh, in Somalia. Think about the rise of secularism 
and atheism in the Western world, according to the reports, uh, according to a report from Christian news and Christian organizations, we find out that the situation in China has worsened as more and more churches have been closed down. Over 5,500 churches have been destroyed, closed down, or confiscated because there is a persecution, an intense persecution against the truth of God's word, against the church. And Jesus said to us that we can expect to see these things as the end evolve. In India, Christian minorities are subjected to extreme persecution manifested in at, in at least 1,445 physical attacks and death threats against Christians in 2019. So, in Nigeria, for example, in 2019, approximately 1,350 Christians were killed for their faith. That's just an approximation because, you know, uh, there might not be accurate statistics to measure and to capture in full detail those that were persecuted for their faith. But we know that these days, uh, that the Christian faith seems to be under heavy attack not just you know uh from uh, third world countries but even in western countries as well we see that there is the rise of secularism there is a rise of the thought of the philosophy and uh, and thought pattern that seeks to drive god out of the system that seeks to enthrone self and that seems to want to make us the god of ourselves uh, one day I was driving, I was, uh, I was on a train in New York, and I, and I saw an advert on, uh, on the po uh, just an advert on the wall of the train. If you are familiar with the train system, you know the way it works. And there was that advert. The advert said, over one million New Yorkers don't need God. Uh, join them. The advert was advertising that you should join those who do not believe in God and in the existence of God. Now, these are some of the things that we can expect to see, not because they have not been in existence, but because as we go through the end time, there will be a rise in the quantum and in the volume of this thing. So, we'll go a bit deeper. This might not be the usual in bad service messages, but these are the things that, need to, that we need to know that can prepare us to have strength and stability as we think about the end times. Number five, what can you expect to see in the end time? And the end times, the Bible says, are also time of spiritual apathy. Times of spiritual apathy. People will become lethargic and they will become spiritually apathetic. They will become disinterested about spiritual things. The fervor of people and the energy of people will reduce as we go through the end times. These are written in the scriptures. See something from the word of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew's gospel chapter 24 and verse number 12. Matthew's gospel 24 and read in verse 12. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said uh, that the love of many shall wash cold because iniquity shall abound. Because lawlessness will increase. The passion of some people will wash cold. I'm praying that you will not be among them. He said because the iniquity will be on the high frequency. The devotion of people. The uh, the commitment of people, the, the condition of the heart of people, we, we, you know, we grow cold. Why? Because iniquity is on the increase. That will be, and when you see spiritual apathy, spiritual apathy manifests in different ways. Spiritual apathy can manifest as, uh, as love wasking cold. As Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel 24 and verse 12, it can also manifest as lack of concern for souls. Lack of concerns for souls. Jesus said in Mark gospel 16 and verse 15, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Somebody is becoming apathetic when you are not concerned about the souls of men. The way you know a believer is alive and alive in God is that you want to take the gospel out there. You want to share the good news to people. You want to tell them that their sins are forgiven. You want to tell them that the prison doors are open and they need to get out. You want to warn them of the, of, you want to warn them about, you know, the judgment that is coming. You want to let them know that there is heaven to gain and that is hell to lose. When you are a sound believer, you are concerned about 
the souls of your neighbor. You are concerned about the souls of your family members. You are concerned about people who are, who are dying day by day and they are dying and going to a Christless eternity. The way you know that you are on fire, that your love is not asking cold, is that you don't want to sleep a day without sharing the gospel with someone. Some of us, we, we, we have our goals for every day. But I ask you, do you have soul winning in your goals? Do you have soul winning as part of your goals? Now, these are the things that symbolize the end time. That there will be coldness. That will be spiritual apathy. And spiritual apathy can manifest, I said, in, uh, in your love working code. And it can also manifest when people become uh, uh, complacent about preaching the gospel and winning sinners back to the Lord. What are the things that manifest spiritual appetite? That there is a decline in appetite. When there is a decline in your appetite for spiritual things. You see, Paul said in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1. Uh, Apostle Paul said to us, he said, desire spiritual things. Desire spiritual gifts. When there is no desire in you for spiritual things, it could be that you are becoming apathetic. When there is no desire for the anointing, no desire for word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gift of the Holy Spirit, where there is no desire uh, to, to be imbued with the power of God, to carry the power of God to your generation, it could be that you are becoming apathetic. A Christian who is on fire, ah, he, he has desire for the things of God. How much of desire for God do you have? These are the signs of the end time. These are part of the signs. These are some of the things that signal to us that in fact, we are in the end times because in the end times, Jesus said, because of the presence of, uh, of iniquity, the love of many shall was good. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will experience revival in your love life. In your love for God, in your love for the things of God, I pray for you that there will be a revival, there will be a resurgence in the name of Jesus Christ. What else again can a signal to us a spiritual party? When there is low spiritual investment, when you don't have heavenly investments, when there is low spiritual investment, the Bible tells us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 21, it says, Where the art of a man is, there his treasure will be also. I want to ask you, where are you laying up your treasures? Where is your investment? Do you have spiritual investments? Are you thinking about the things that are beyond this life? Are you thinking about the things that are beyond this space? You see, coronavirus has told us the things that are important. We have our cars, we can't drive them around. We have our clothes, we can't use them. We have our money, we can't even spend them, so to speak. We have holidays that are already booked, we cannot travel. We have things that, are, that, that should be source of enjoyment and relaxation for us, but we have to put a pause on them. And why is that? Because of the happenings of this time. Now, we are, if everything you are doing is to lay up treasures for yourself on this side of life, and you don't think about the life to come, then you are in a state of spiritual apathy, that Paul talks about and that Jesus talked uh, talk about in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 24, that your love is waxing cold. When you have uh, spiritual energy, you will have spiritual investment. Number six, what can we expect to happen in these end times? In the end times, what are, uh, what's another major sign that we can expect to see in the end time? This is a positive one. And that is the fact that there will be a global advancement of the truth of the gospel. The gospel will advance. There will be an advancement of the truth of the gospel. Matthew's gospel 24 and from verse 14. Matthew's gospel 24 and in verse 14. This is what the Bible says. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come 
come. So against the backdrop of persecution that we see in China, in different parts of the world, in Africa, in Somalia, in Nigeria, in um, Indonesia, you know, even in the United States, against the persecutions of the faith, the Bible says that God has an energy, a commitment to uh, the gospel in this end time such that it will ensure that the gospel is preached in all the nations of the earth. So the kingdom of God will be advancing in spite of the persecution. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God will be advancing in spite of the secularism hallelujah in spite of any form of a false revival that is going on in the world the word of the lord tells us that there will be a massive uh, encroachment of the gospel to all the nations of the earth as we go through this end time so rejoice people of god rejoice servants of the gospel rejoice those of us who are enthusiasts of the gospel the bible says that god is committed to making sure that the gospel is preached in all the nations of the earth and then the end shall come i, I like a scripture in micah micah chapter number two micah chapter 2 reading from verse 12 all the way to verse 13 the bible says the the breaker goes up before them they break out they pass through the gates and go out by heat so their king goes home before them and the lord at their head hallelujah bless the lord for that one the breaker is going forth ahead of us it might be the time of persecution it might be the time of a rise of secularism it might be the time that where people are becoming insipid with spiritual things it might be the time of lethargy it might be the time that people are rising against the gospel but in spite of that the bible says that the breaker hallelujah the spirit of grace goes forth before us god breaks the way open before us he breaks the 1040 window he breaks open places where the gospel has not been preached we can expect a breaker anointing in the hand times hallelujah it goes before us to break open systems uh, to break open kingdoms to break open uh, policies to break open entrances to break open nations because this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached uh, unto the hands of the heart whether it's in the emirates whether it's an it, it's in russia whether it's in china whether it's any communist nation or communist beliefs the bible says that the breaker we go ahead of us hallelujah god is breaking system he's breaking chains uh, he's breaking he's breaking structures that are anti-gospel god is breaking things open so that god himself can go before us as the one as the lord of the harvest and bringing in the harvest of the kingdom the bible says that in these end times there will also be a global advancement of the kingdom of god hallelujah I say hallelujah. Look at what has happened uh, during these past months uh, uh, as we came under, uh, as it were, uh, the COVID experience and church had to relocate from a church building and it had to relocate to uh, the houses of people online. Uh, church, churches had to relocate. As it were, churches were not just empty, they became deployed. Uh, we moved away from physical buildings and we began to engage lives on the internet, engage people on the internet. That is what is happening in the end time. More people have had the gospel. They have had the gospel than when we were in a church like this. They have had the gospel more. When we had to leave what we were doing inside the church and we became the church that is the end time that is what we can expect to see as we think about this end time that the end times are also a time of a forceful advancement of the kingdom in matthew's gospel chapter 11 matthew's gospel 11 and verse 12 the bible says that from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force these are the days of forceful advancement of the kingdom and i'm trusting god for you every member of impact service i'm trusting god with you 
I'm trusting God that the hand of God will come upon you significantly. That you will be part of the vanguard of people. You'll be part of the end time army that will take the, the gospel to the nations of the earth. I'm trusting God that you will take the gospel to the streets. You will take the gospel to your home. You will take up the gospel to your job. You will take the gospel with you everywhere you find yourself. And you will be among those who brings who makes the kingdom of this world to become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ as we declare the everlasting gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the end time are not just a time of spiritual apathy. They are not just perilous times. They are not just the time of lowering of uh, moral and spiritual standard. They are not just the time of, uh, of, of falsehood and deception. They are not just the time of persecution of the body of Christ. They are not just a time of spiritual apathy. They are also the times of gospel advancement. And I rejoice at that. I rejoice because the greatest revival that the world has ever known is about to hit the earth. That God is about to unleash spiritual energy, a new spiritual radiation upon the earth because the gospel must be preached to every tribe and every tongue uh that that scripture in revelation rejoices the heart revelation chapter number five yes we will come from every tribe from every tongue from every nation from every system from every structure from every ethnos from every human organization and we will sing the song of the lamb of god we will come from every nation we will come from every religion every place God will bring a people for himself because this gospel of the kingdom must be preached and, and the head to the ends of the earth. And then shall the end come. Number seven, what can we expect to see as we think about the end time? The end time finally is at uh, uh, times of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the outpouring of the Spirit. The outpouring of the Spirit. The outpouring of the Spirit. See something with me in Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 2, and verse 17. Hallelujah. Acts 2 and verse 17. It says, I will pour my Spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. He said, And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Somebody say with me, say, I shall prophesy. Come on, say it loud, say, I shall prophesy. Anywhere you have, lift up your right hand, say, I shall prophesy. That is a calling upon every end time believer. And that is to be filled with the spirit of God and you become a prophet and you prophesy. You declare the intentions of God. Hallelujah. You stand upon the word of God and declare the intentions of God. You declare the word of God with power, with goodness. Why? Because the end times are the times of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These are the times of the outpouring of the Spirit. There might be persecution. There might be all manner of events and all manner of things happening in the world. But God has also promised us that as we go through the end time, there will be a deluge, a massive release of the Spirit of God upon believers to engage successfully in this end time. And I know you are one of them. Come on, somebody say, I am one of them. Ah, uh, the word of God that you are about to see, you are about to see the, the greatest day of the church. As we go through the end times, the end times are not, the, are not only the times when there will be persecution about the church. The glory of Zion is about to manifest. The hand of God is about to bring unusual signs and wonders. We are about to experience the greatest revival. Uh, it is time for our shadows to raise the dead. It is time for our voice to call back those that are dead. It is time for the outpouring of the spirit. And the Bible says that if you will trust God this end time, that the are anointing of the holy ghost will come upon your life uh, you can step into hospitals and as you get there you just see dead people jacking back to life uh, why because there will be an outpouring and i want you to believe god for an outpouring because it's coming upon you it's coming upon your life it's coming upon your life it's coming upon your home a new anointing a fresh grace because this end time god 
is born in his spirit upon our flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, I rejoice at the end times. The end times are not just a time to be sorrowful. We are not to live as uh, Christians who are trying to escape. No, we are to live triumphantly because these end times are the times of a massive outpouring of the Holy Ghost. See something with me in Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse number 10. Zechariah 12 and verse 10. He said, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Right? I will pour my spirit upon our flesh. And this place he said, I will pour the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication. The end times are the times of the outpouring of the spirit. God is opening not just the faucets of heaven. He's opening to us a massive shower. Is hoping to us a deluge. Is opening to us the windows of heaven in such a way that uh, the, the, the flood of the Spirit will come upon him that is thirsty. We come upon the one that is fruitless. And when the Holy Ghost descends upon us, as we position ourselves to be incubated and to be anointed by the Holy Ghost for the works of this end time, then we will see God moving in his power. We will see the kingdom of God going forward. We will see, look, we will see, we will see children. We will see teenagers performing signs and wonders. Why? Because these are the days of the outpouring of the spirit. These are the days when you, I mean, these are the days that even the devil himself will regret that he ever came into this season. Why? Because there is a massive outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We have seen COVID-19, but we can expect to see a revival. Because after, after every devastation, there is a release of the Holy Ghost. And God is saying that in this early time, there will be a massive release of the Holy Ghost for your sons and for your daughters to prophesy. Where do you stand this end time? Are you going to be among those who are weak? Are you going to be among those who are cold? Are you going to be among those who are lethargic? Are you going to be among those whose love is wasking, whose love, uh, uh, whose love life has worse cold? Are you going to be among those who are backsliding? Or you are going to be among those who will trust God for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost like never before? Trust God for anointing to shake nations. Trust God for anointing to do the works of Him that sent us while it is day. Are you going to release your heart, open up yourself to God for the massive outpouring of his spirit and his enablement this end time? Look, the, God is available. And the spirit is available. The anointing is available. The unction is available. The presence and the power of God is available. God is looking for those whose hearts are open so that he can fill them up, he can anoint them, he can position them to be effective believers in this end time. And this is what I call you to my brother and my sister and everyone hearing me. These are the days of a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you know the way it works sometimes. It's like having the ocean, the Atlantic. Alright? You are positioned by the Atlantic. What do you do? Somebody could go there and just, uh, and just take a, a small bowl or just draw out of it. And somebody can also decide and say, you know what? I will just enjoy the Atlantic. I will release myself to the Atlantic. I'll swim in the Atlantic. All right? The Spirit of God is, is like the massive Atlantic. More massive than the Atlantic. Ubiquitous. Huge and heavy. And God is just willing for us to release ourselves so that we can, we can have... It, it, it's, it's all about your desire. It's all about your hunger. God is not a respecter of persons, but is a respecter of hunger. If you will hunger for God in this end time, 
if you will open up your heart for God in this end time, if you will say, God, if you can use anybody, use me. If you will surrender yourself to God for this end time, then you can expect to be empowered by God, used by God, and you will not be a weak Christian. You will be a Christian that is effective and that brings glory to the name of the Lord. I'd like you to just stand when where you are. Just stand up uh, uh, and pray with me if you can. Just, uh, just lift up your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you. These are the end times. These are not just the times of persecution and failings. These are also the times of the release of the Holy Ghost. I'd like you to lift up your two hands to heaven anywhere you are and just say, Holy Spirit, come afresh on me. Let your hand come upon me. Let your presence overwhelm me. Let your unction come upon me, sweet spirit of the living God. Let grace and mercy come upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I desire you, Holy Ghost. I'd like you to speak to the Lord and just say, Lord, I desire you. I desire your presence. I desire your power. I desire you. Only you can help me to be effective. Only you can anoint me for that which you have chosen me to do. Only you can empower me for what I need. Holy Spirit of God, come upon me and come upon me afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, let there be an outpouring of the spirit of grace and supplication. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the spirit of prayer rest upon us. And as the spirit of prayer rests upon us, let the unction and the power of God rest upon us. Let the power of God rest upon us. The power to bring revival to the nation. The power to preach the gospel. The power to go out there and perform signs and wonders to the glory of our God. The power to make the kingdoms of this world the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Lord, we receive it in the name of Jesus. Christ. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for the next one minute. Mandele kapasuta gaya de lemosa. I kaparoso felika tayanda lima sota. Jabra la magazeze lemoso preliga dali antos. I bro la mazeze la prolemo zeze lite yasha. Rista palabashata. Jande kamasopa. Liko pasute kalete nayaba. Andi krabashata. Baruga zazalika talia. Lendre mazoso fila katale mozofelata. Jandra gabasuta galende. Mendro kobaga sataya. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Lord. Father, we just submit ourselves unto you. We know these are the end times. And we know you have grace for every time and for every season. We release ourselves into the hand of your spirit. We ask in the name of Jesus that you fill us up afresh. We ask for a fresh breath of the spirit, a fresh touch. A fresh grace, a fresh enablement, a fresh quickening, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for that brother, I pray for that sister, that the spirit of grace and supplication will come upon you. Driving a new effectiveness in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will not be a weak believer. You will be a believer that will stand on the word of God and manifest the glories of the end times. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you that there will be a resurgence of the might of God inside of your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind and cast out every spirit of coldness, every spirit of apathy. In the name of Jesus, they will not have their will over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive for you a new strength in the spirit. Grace to arise like a mighty one. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will know the presence of Jesus. I pray that you will know the glory of Jesus. I pray that you will be effective in communicating Jesus to this generation. It is well with you. Thank you, Father Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for somebody out there today. You cannot be filled with the Holy Ghost if you don't know Jesus. Jesus is the one who, who sends the Holy Spirit. You cannot survive the end time by yourself. The end is coming. The coming of Jesus is near. And no Jesus, no life. There is heaven to gain and there is hell to lose. And today, I said before you life and death, a blessing and a cousin. I admonish you to choose life, to choose Jesus, 
to choose deliverance, to choose mercy and grace, to choose redemption and forgiveness. And if you want to make that choice today, I want you to I put your hand over your heart and say these prayers after me. Say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I cannot save myself, but Lord, you can save me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the, in the book of life. Make me yours and yours forever in the name of Jesus. I believe with my heart that Jesus died for me. And I confess with my mouth that I was raised up for my justification. Lord Jesus, from today, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for accepting me, for forgiving me, and for empowering me. In Jesus' name mighty name we are afraid amen lord i pray for everyone that prays that prayer that prayed that prayer that lord your hand will rest upon them that you will seal them with the seal of redemption with the seal of the lamb in the name of jesus christ that lord you will preserve them and you will fill them with the holy ghost and that they will become vessels for you O god even in this end time we give you praise and glory father in jesus mighty name we have prayed.